There we go. It's a little better. Hey, I am so excited to share with you today how to use the Succulent Tracker app. Now, there's a couple things I want to get out just right from the get-go. One, this app is not designed to identify your succulents. If you need help identifying your succulents, there are apps that do a, an okay job at that. And we'll share some links to a resource, to a couple different resources really to help you identify your succulents. So there are some ways this app can assist you in that endeavor, but that is not the purpose of the Succulent Tracker app. So that's thing number one. Thing number two is the app is completely free to use for up to five plants. So you get the full functionality of the app and that way you can test it out, try it out, see exactly how it works without having to pay for it. If you do have more than five plants, then it's just $3 a month or $30 a year after that. Then the next thing or last thing I want to get out of the way before we get started is the app will not inherently tell you how often to water your succulents. That is going to really vary depending on where you live, what succulent you're growing. We have a whole video on factors that determine the watering schedule for your succulent. But what the app will do is help you record all the actions that you're taking with your succulents. It can send you reminders for when to water them and it can help you just better manage everything going on in your succulent garden. So for me, one of the biggest things that this helps with is reminding me when to water and being able to see when I watered last. And that is a huge help when it comes to diagnosing problems. So if you have a succulent that's starting to look a little funky, you can go back and look at your watering or your repotting and see what has happened with that plant in the last few weeks or months to get an idea of what it needs. So with that, let's dive in and I'll start showing you how to use the Succulent Tracker app. Okay, I'm gonna flip this around here real quick. Okay, one other thing to note, I am using an iPhone today for the demonstration. However, the app is the same for Android and I personally use it on my Android phone the most, but that's also the one I'm using to do the live video today. So the app will look the same whether you're using it on Android or Apple. The only difference being on an Android phone, um, as you're probably familiar with, you'll have your different buttons along the bottom. So if we go here, when you very first open the Succulent Tracker app, if you already have plants installed, um, it will take you to this watering screen. If you don't have any plants installed, it'll give you a little notice that says, hey, add some plants, and it will point down to this add a plant button. Now, I am using my actual plant database. This is not a dummy one. So this is um, all my real plants. And I'm going to show you just to start how to get a plant added. So you're going to click add a plant. You can use a camera and take a picture of the plant live. So if I wanted to add this succulent, um, I could use the camera and take a picture of it right now, but instead I'm going to use my photos. So this will just pull up anything that's currently in your photo album on your phone. And I am going to go ahead and select this one. And then from here, you can use two fingers to kind of zoom in and adjust the positioning of the photo. And once you have it where you like it, then you can click done. Um, if you want to rotate it, you can select the rotate button um, and it'll let you rotate 90 degrees each way. Oh, sorry, this is the undo button. I. <laughs> It's different looking at it when I'm not actively using it. So, okay. So you can rotate it left or right and then pinch and zoom to crop it however you'd like. And it will always crop it square. So you can click done and then click use this photo. All right, now you have the option to either add another plant or set the plant details. So I'm gonna click add another and you'll see it just goes here and it'll let you select a new plant now I'm going to do something a little bit different with this. I'm going to zoom in and crop this one in like that and click done, use this photo. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to add each of these plants individually. And I'll show you why for the magic that comes in just a minute. Okay. 
So as you can see, it can take a little bit of time to get these added in, but once they're all added in, it is a lifesaver. It's so much easier to manage your plants, especially like, as you saw, I have a couple hundred plants. And so getting a bunch added in took a little while, but now it makes my, it makes my like management of all these plants so much easier. Okay, so that should be enough. I'm not gonna go ahead and put all of them in. So now I'm gonna put, click to set the plant details. Now, there's a lot of things going on in this screen and we're gonna go through each one of them and um, I'll just show you what to do from there. So the very first thing that you'll notice at the top is the name of the plant. So it currently says new plant because it doesn't know what kind of plant it is. So if I hit that little pencil icon, now I'm given the option to put in the genus, species or variety, the cultivar and the common name, as well as a nickname. So I know a lot of people like to name their succulents. Um, you can put that in right here. If you know the genus and species already, you can type it in. Um, your other option is you can match from the plant database. Now, this is something we're working to constantly add to and improve. It is by no means a comprehensive list of plants available, but if you start typing in, you can see it will fill in plants that match what you're typing in. And as I indicated at the beginning, this app does not identify succulents for you, but you can use it as a way to get a feel for if a particular succulent um, matches any of these. And we're working on getting this all sped up so that the pictures um, load much faster. So in this case though, I know that this plant is a variety of Crassula it's not a jade, but it is a variety of jade. So for now, I'm actually going to click on this name and you'll notice it gives me a number of options here. So it tells me some details about the plant that the jade plant can be grown in shade, full sun, partial sun, or indoors. And it generally needs watering every 14 days. This is a guideline. It's not a hard, fast rule, but a guideline or a starting point dormant in the summer and it can be toxic to children or pests or people in general. So I have a couple options here. I can apply just the name or I can apply all of this info to the plant. So for now I'm going to click apply all and now you'll notice up here it gave me the name of the plant. Um, this is the genus and species and then this is the common name right here. It also set my watering schedule now to every 14 days. And then I have this nice blue button, tap for reference, that will pull up all of that information. Now, as I said, I know this isn't Crassula ovata, so I'm actually just going to come in here and remove these. But I like having that reference information there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll just give this a nickname. Really exciting. And then click Save. So now you can see that information is updated. You can always go back and edit the name. You can also click the X right here to remove its connection to that plant card. All that will do, I'll show you right here, um, and it tells you this, you will have to remove any tags and change the name or change the watering schedule. So it's still left here as every 14 days, but you can see that reference icon is gone. All of the tags are still here though that it added. Um, so it just, it really just removes this. Okay, so again, anything you want, you can add into, you can add any names or information to the name right there. The next section on here is the photo. And there's a couple different things that you can do with this. If you just tap on the photo itself, it pulls up the picture. Um, you can zoom in, you can share it. And if there's multiples, you'll actually be able to swipe through. If you click on the camera and pencil icon, then you'll be taken to the photo history. This is something I'm gonna show you more in detail in a little bit, um, but it'll show everything here. You also have the option to add another photo of your plant. Okay, so that's the photo piece. You'll notice on here, it has a little succulent and a pencil icon. If we tap this, this allows us to record any activity for the plant. There's a number of different options here. So you can add a note, record watering, treating for pests, fertilizing, pruning, repotting. So I can select any of these. Let's say I treated this for pests. I can add a note in here so I can say it was mealybugs 
and that I treated it with safer soap. Oops. And then click apply. Okay, so that's recording in action. I'll show you where that shows up in just a second. The other thing that you have right around here is this watering can icon. If I tap that, it will mark this plant as watered today. So the the nice thing about this edit section is you can actually go back and pick um, a different date for recording an action. But if you just wanna water that plant today, then you can do that there. If you tap on last watered today, it'll also bring up the record activity icon or um, action. All right, so moving down, we have location. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It's where the plant is located. So if I tap that little icon, you can see you have the option to select indoor or outdoor. Um, I'm gonna put outdoor because my plants, I have a lot less plants outside. So I'm gonna call this um, just a new location. Actually, let's call it something different. Somewhere, fun. And I'm going to put a one at the top here just so it shows up at the very beginning of my list because it is sorted alphabetically. So now you can see that location icon changed to a sun to indicate it's outside. And we now have that location saved there. Okay, the tags, we had a bunch that were added by um, connecting this to a plant reference card. But if you want to add tags of your own, you can click the little tag icon tag, uh, tag icon. And then you can add something in here. Now it's important to note, you don't want to use this arrangement section for the tags. You'll just tap right in here with all of the other tags. And I could say that this is in a Susan Ock pot and you can actually see I already have Susan Ock as a tag. Um, I personally like using tags to indicate where I bought a particular plant or what type of planter it's in, where I bought the planter. You could also use it, as you can see here, for lighting requirements, for dormancy, anything that you want to know about the plant and anything that you might want to group your plants by. So for example, I mark any of my succulents that are in a snappy pot because I, I like to know which succulents are in a snappy pot. And I'll show you where that comes into play a little bit later. Um, I will show you this arrangement section. I'm going to get to it in just a minute because it is a little bit more complicated. Just make sure when you're done, you click save. Okay, now we have the history. So if I tap on this calendar icon, you can see now all of the different things that I have done for this plant in just the last few minutes. Let's start with the acquired um, section here. So starting at the top and working your way down, if you want to create a note about the plant, like maybe here you want to add um, that you got it from a friend, You could put that in there and then you can also change the date. You can put this date back as far as you would like it to. Keep in mind that you won't be able to record an action before the acquired date. So if I got this on the 17th of April, if I wanted to go back and mark the plant as watered on April 3rd, the app wouldn't let me because I didn't get the plant until the 17th. On the other hand, I could go back and add that I got this on October 3rd and then click apply. So now you can see down here the acquired um, date has been updated and that tag has, or that um, description has been added also. And then you can see, okay, I treated for pests. If I need to go back and either delete it or modify it, I can do that. Um, so maybe I want to put that I sprayed safer soap on the soil and click apply. Um, you can also add notes to the watering. So a lot of times I will put if it rained and um, add that there. You can add all of these notes, of course, when you're um, recording the action as well. So it'll show when you moved the plant and also if you changed the tags. You can also record an action from this screen. So we've tried to make it so that the icons are um, pretty consistent throughout the app. So anywhere you see that succulent pencil, you can edit or add an activity. Um, and like I said, every time you can add a note and you can also change the date. So now you'll see I can pick any of these days to record that action, but it won't let me go before October 3rd when I said I acquired this plant. 
Um, and then you can also delete the activity as well. Just know that you can't get it back once it is done or once it's been deleted. Um, so this will just show a basic or all of the recent activities for that plant. And then the very last thing here is delete plant. So there's two things you can do when you delete the plant. The first is just completely delete it from the app and it'll be gone forever. The other option is you can put it in the memory garden. Um, so if you want to delete the plant, we'll just go ahead and delete this. You type in delete and then click delete forever. So now that plant is totally gone. Um, okay, so uh, the memory garden, let me show you that really quick. So the memory garden will show you plants that you have removed from your active areas. Um, so a bunch of these are plants that I had that have died or were gifted to other people. Um, they show up there, but that way like you can come back and see like, oh yeah, I remember this aloe and um, I happen to know I gave this one to my sister-in-law. Usually I put a note in before I put it in the memory garden. That way I remember why it's there, but I can also see the history. Okay. So that was the plant editor screen. There's a lot there, um, but I wanna show you a few other pieces of the app. So as I mentioned before, when you, once you have plants added, when you first open the app, it will bring you to the watering screen. Now on this watering screen, it'll show you any plant that is due for watering. This is determined based on the average number of days since last watered or based on the watering schedule that you've set. So for most of my succulents, I don't actually set a watering schedule. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but well, let me go back to that. You can see right here, it shows the average watering is every eight days. And so since it was watered nine days ago, it's now due for watering according to this average. Um, let me see my kids. Well, okay, so there's, yep. And this is sorted by location. So it will just be all alphabetical based on location. You'll also notice the new plants that I've added in. So these four, they show up here because the plant, the app doesn't know yet when they need to be watered. If I add a watering schedule to this one, say watering every 11 days. Um, now, if I go back here, usually that will clear it. <laughs> Um, interesting. That might be a little bug we need to work on. Um, but normally it should clear it from, oh, that's right. It should show up there because it should be watered every 11 days, but it doesn't know when it was watered last. Um, so I can actually go in and we'll add a watering activity. Change the acquired date. And then I'm gonna add a watering activity for a few days ago. So now you'll see it was last watered five days ago. And now it will not show up here because it does not need to be watered because it was last watered five days ago. Um, okay, so back to this watering section. So the watering section will show you anything that needs to be watered today. It'll also show you things that are close to needing to be watered. Um, something just to note, in this section, the red nine indicates how many days ago this plant was watered. In the soon section, these are plants that need to be watered in the next one to two days, and it'll show you um, if it's due in one or two days. So this, these are all due in one day. This one should be watered in two days. Um, so that just gives you an idea of what to look for. These are some seeds my kids are growing and those were watering every other day. So they need to be watered frequently. It'll also show you what plants have been watered. So if you tap on the watered section, um, so these are the plants that I've already watered today, all of my outside plants. And then my son watered that one today. And then it'll show you plants that don't need to be watered yet. And it will show you how many days until it does need to be watered. So three days from now, six days from now, 10 days from now. And again, this is all based on the watering schedule that you have set for the plant or 
the average number of days since last watered. So there you go. So this one is watered every eight days. And so it is due for watering in six more days. Okay, you can also search by location here. Um, you can, it'll, if you tap in here, it'll show you all of your locations or if you want to find a particular one, then you can do that. Okay, so that is the watering screen. Then you have the My Plants screen. And the My Plants screen shows all of your plants. So the watering screen is really just gonna show you what plants need to be watered is the main reason that you'd probably look here um, or the ones that are upcoming. But My Plants will show you all of the plants based on the groupings that you have set up. So here you can see it's grouped by genus. So if I wanna look for all of my Echeveria, I can see all of them right here. And I watered most of my succulents yesterday, so that's why they're all a number one. Or you can just um, scroll through, have a bunch of succulents that are not labeled yet with their um, genus and species. But we can start here with aeoniums, agaves, albuca, aloes, and you can scroll through it that way. You can also um, view them by location. So here I have all of my indoor succulents um, on their various locations. So my small plant stand, my walnut plant stand. Um, here we have all the outdoor succulents. So we were in the memory garden there before. You can see what's on the patio. At the top of each of these will be any plants that don't have a location set. So that'll show up at the top of indoor and outdoor. So all of these are ones that I have not yet indicated where they're located. And so the app doesn't know yet if it's indoors or outdoors. So that's why it will show at the top of both. Um, the thing that I love about this is you can use this to record actions. So let's say I'm in the office. I want to water all of the succulents that are on that bottom shelf. So now I can select water. I can uncheck any of these that don't need to be watered, which is most of them in this case today, and then click apply, and that will mark all of them as watered. So if you tend to water your succulents in big groups, which is how I personally tend to do it, um, that is a really great option is just to be able to water it by location. Um, this is also nice for outdoor succulents, um, especially if it rains. So you can just tap here, mark as watered, type that it rained and select any of the ones that you want or don't want and then click apply or hit the back arrow if that's not what you want to do. Now you can do the same thing with tags. So um, all of these, this unknown, I have 185 plants that don't have any tags. And part of that is because the main reason that I'm looking at succulents is really based on location. So my kids put in that all of their planters are 3D printed. So that's one of their tags. Um, pots that I bought from Amazon because people tend to ask me that. Although you can see, I actually need to update. Let's go ahead and do that. This is no longer in an, in an Amazon pot. So I'm gonna delete that tag and I'm gonna mark that it's now in a snappy pot and click save. And now it doesn't show up in here. So this is a great way, just if there's a particular way you want to group your succulents or anything interesting about them. So all of these were grown from cuttings. And so I like to know how those have panned out. Um, and again, there's you know dormancy, you can have where you purchased it. Um, this one came from this giant panda plant I had a couple of years ago, the pottery. Um, <laughs> looks like my kids put in which one is theirs and which one is what they're sharing. So there's a lot of different options and ways that you can use tags. The other thing you can do to help you find a particular succulent is just searching. Um, so I know I have, <laughs> I know I have a panda plant. And so I can just search for panda and it will show me the panda plants that are um, available or in my collection. And this will search anything. It'll search tags, it'll search within the name, and it can also search location. So the search can be a really great option if you, um, if you have a particular plant and 
you want to just get to it very quickly. Okay, I think I've run through <laughs> pretty much everything that's in the action side of things. There's a lot of hidden features within this um, that make the plant or make the app even more useful. But I just wanted to run through kind of the basics here. Um, also in the settings, um, you can manage your account. So you can choose your subscription. Your sync key is a unique identifier for your database of succulents. So you can actually share this with someone else. They can install the app and then you share the sync key and they can then access your plants. Um, different things like the app theme, if you want it to be light or dark based on what your phone is already set to and a number of other things here. Or if you want to sign out of your account completely. Um, if you have just like a support request or feature request, those are in here, um, as well as care information or links to purchase succulents. Okay, there's one other thing that I wanted to go over though with the tags specifically. So as you saw when we first started here that I put all of these succulents that are in the same arrangement, I put them all in separately. And the reason for doing that there's a couple of reasons why you might do this. So one is that you can put in, um, actually, I'm pretty sure this one should be in the database. Gasteria Little Warty. Okay, so I'm just going to apply the name for this one because I already had like the watering um, set for it. So th that would be one reason to use it is um, then you can name the plants individually. So this is a type of Haworthia. I don't know which kind, but you can put all the individual plant names in there. Oh, here we go. This one is also, oops. Stary little warty. Okay, so now I've named all three of those individually. Um, the other thing that you can do with this is inside the tags, you can actually group these succulents together in an arrangement. So if you record an action for one of those succulents, it'll apply it to all of them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a an arrangement name and click save. So now you can see it has this little at sign. If I added something different, because this is in a Susan Ockpot, um, those tags show up differently. They don't have a little at sign. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to also put this in a Susanock. And now you can see I have this option to put it in that green pot. And this one as well. Okay, so now you can see this one was marked watered five days ago, which um, I know we just made that up here, but if I tap on this little red circle, it will mark the plants as watered. And you can see because these are in an arrangement together, it updated all of them. So if I go into this one and I say, let's say I treated this for pests and I soaked the soil with safer soap and click apply. Well, before I click apply. So it says here, this plant's part of an arrangement. This action will apply to all plants in the arrangement. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. So you can see here, I treated it for pests. And then I open up this one and it also shows that it was treated for pests. And the third one, same thing. So a lot of people like using this as a way to, um, to save information about every single individual plant while still not having to mark all, you know, there's probably seven or eight plants in this arrangement, not having to worry about marking every single one of them um, when they water. So that can be a great option. I personally, um, I actually don't even have that many arrangements left, but here's this arrangement in my actual list. So I like just calling this an arrangement and I like seeing it all in one place I don't know if I did this, I did not. But one of my thoughts with it is under the acquired, I could put in Gasteria, Little Warty, and all of the names of those plants in a note here on the plant. 
but it is totally up to you. It is an option. So one of the things though that you will find is there's just a lot of different ways um, to use the app however works best for you. So I know a lot of our users love having that arrangement tag. Um, something also to note with this is if you move these to a location, oh, I deleted that one. Ah, something. I'm really creative when I do this on the fly. Okay, so here's some cool location. Okay. So I moved this outside to that something cool location. And now you'll notice on indoor, those all disappeared from the top. They are now under outdoor and they've all been moved to this new location. So it'll say right here that we moved it. Right here and right here. So now let's say that I, I am unpotting or repotting this arrangement and I decide I wanna take this, well, realistically, I wanna take this one out because as you can see, it's kind of struggling in here. It's not getting enough water. And so I'm gonna move it into its own pot. So I am gonna just click the X on that arrangement and click save. So all of the old actions are still saved with this it's still in the same location, but if I tap here to unwater that plant, you'll notice it unwaters it here, but it doesn't affect the other plants in the arrangement because it's no longer connected to them. Let's see, there was one other thing I wanted to tell you about that. Um, it also won't affect any other tags that you had in here. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to actually record on here that I repotted this. And I'm going to say I took it from a larger arrangement. And I could even say, um, maybe I'll even put the at tag in there. So that way I know what arrangement it came from. And then you can see here on that repotting action, it'll show um, that note that I put in. All right, the other thing that I wanna highlight in kind of this plant editor screen that I think is a hidden feature that a lot of people um, don't use or don't know that it exists, but I absolutely love it, is the photo history. So let me show you, this is a great example. So I have this cute little plant. As you can see, I leave a lot of mine without the names on. Um, it's not a huge deal to me um, to know all of them, but I do eventually want to go back and add them. Okay, so this plant, though, if we look back here in the history, you can see I pruned it on February 25th of this year, watered it and fertilized it since then. But the other thing that I did is I took a photo of this plant at various steps along the way. So here's what it looked like in 2021. And then as I swipe through, this is what it looked like when I pruned it. There's a couple aerial roots, but um, you can actually see, they probably won't show up in here, but there's actually a couple little green dots along the edge. It was already starting to get some babies there. And then here's what it looked like next, and next, and next. So it's so fun to keep this history of your plant and take pictures of it over time. As long as you remember, I frequently forget to take pictures. And then also here you can just see, um, you can see all of those in order. Now, let me show you a different plant that I have done this for. So I have another plant that um, is also a cutting. And let's see, let's go into this view of it. Okay, so I cut it off um, also on February 25th. And then you can see here what it looked like. Oops. What you can, what it looked like after I cut it. So here's before, and these were taken on the same day. And here's after. It does not look great here. But check out what happened just a few days later. There's a little baby growing. And there's another little baby growing on the side. You'll notice these photos were both taken on the same day. So you can upload as many pictures as you want. Here's a third photo from that same day. Um, 
and then another picture a few days later and so on. So, okay, and, and then this picture, <laughs> that threw me off, 3.9 and 4.9. Okay, so here's the thing though that's cool is I like to see like the overall image of the succulent rather than these close-ups, but I also like having the close-ups there. But let's say for whatever reason, I want this to be the primary picture, or maybe I wanna go back and have this one be the primary picture. Um, I can do that. I can pick any of these pictures to be the main image for the plant. So you press and hold and you can do a couple things. You can mark it as the featured photo, which is what I was just talking about. You can share it. You can also change the date. So let's say you took a bunch of pictures of your succulents a few days ago and you forgot to upload them to the app. You can still upload it to the app just like we did previously. Click done use this photo, and then you can set the date for that plant. So it will default to selecting the newest picture that you upload as the featured image, so the one that shows up here. Um, but obviously this is not the right plant, but I can change the date. Um, so I can go and put it for a few weeks ago. And now that picture shows up here, still the featured image. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it now and then it defaults to that one being the main one. Let's say maybe I wanted to switch it to this. I can just mark that as a featured photo. So there's a couple different options there. Um, something that is really important to note, when you add a new plant to your collection, it will not by default have a watering schedule set. So let's take a look at this plant here. So no watering history is available. It doesn't have a watering schedule set. So in this case, it's going to tell me I need to water it every day. So if I mark it as water today, the average watering is zero days. And so the app is going to tell me I need to water it tomorrow or the next day or the next day. Um, so it's important that once you do add a plant to the app, that you give it a watering schedule so that it doesn't show up on your watering list every single day. The other way that you can change that is by like matching it from the database. So um, this is an Echeveria. It's not going to match any of these, but um, let's pick. Whoops. Yeah, it's not Azulita, but we'll tap there. So if I pick this and I apply all info, it's going to set that watering schedule to every 14 days. So, oh, but it won't overwrite what you already have. And I had already put nine in here. That's true. I did forget about that part. But it's added all the tags. If this had been set to um, zero, now if I go, I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to match it because it really doesn't matter. I'm going to apply all info. So now that it's set to every 25 days, which was the recommended amount for this particular um, succulent. So you can see here, watering every 21 to 28 days. So it just um, picks one in the middle, which is 25. Okay, that is a lot of stuff. And I know there have been a number of comments coming in. So let me go into the chat and see what questions we have. I am so glad that you guys Love the app. Thank you for all the comments. This is something that I I absolutely built it for myself because with almost 300 plants, it got crazy. Um, it just got crazy trying to remember when I watered last. And if I like skipped a plant one time, yeah, it was a nightmare. Um, okay, Keith says, can you see all the plants info in your database before I start to enter my plants? Um. The short answer to that is no, though that is something that we could probably make available at some point. If you, um, so we have our types of succulents ID cards or reference cards, and this information is actually based on those cards. It got a little bit tricky to try and make all this information available and not overwhelm users. 
So the short answer to that is no, it's not all available in one place to view, um, but that is something that we could definitely look at adding, um, especially like I'm just thinking we could have similar to the My Plants screen, we could have like a refer reference plants screen and it would show you all of that information. Um, that reminds me though, there's a lot of press and hold hidden features. One of those is the plant details. Um, so since this succulent is tied to one of those plant cards, um, it gives me the option to look at the plant details and all the tags. Um, it'll actually show me that on this too, but there just won't be as much information, as much information there. That does remind me of another thing. So when a plant is due for watering, sometimes you want to wait a couple days. You can click this little snooze button and have it remind you in a few days if you want. And if you want to unsnooze it, you just tap that same button. And then here, um, if I tap this, I can also untap it to unwater. And everywhere you are in the app, this little circle with the number can be used to water a succulent. So that succulent has now been marked as watered, or I can untap it to unwater it. It's been tricky to get this full tutorial out because there are so many, there's so many things hidden in there that work. Um, and they're just sometimes a little bit hidden. Cheryl, I'm glad you learned something new. Okay, Carol, is there a way to get rid of some past searches? I accidentally typed in a password. Oh, hmm, I see what you're saying. That would be annoying to have that show up there. No, there is not currently a way to do that. However, that is something that I'm pretty sure we could easily add. So it would basically just be, you could like swipe and delete or have a little X next to those. I will work on that for you, Carol. Let me talk to the developers and see when we can get that in. Um, Carol also says, please consider adding minimum temperature to the date database and suggested fertilizing schedule. Yes. So that is definitely something that we can get added in um, at some point as well. We, the other, <laughs> the other thing that I'm working on um, it's in the works. It is not ready yet. So obviously we have the watering schedule and so it shows up here. You can set it however you want. I'm trying to figure out where it makes sense to put in a fertilizing, pruning, repotting schedule. So basically any of these things you would be able to set a schedule for as well. Um, we're just trying to figure out where it makes sense. Like we know we can add that functionality, but there's already a lot going on here. So we're, we're in the process of getting that one set up as well. Yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Also, please feel free to use um, the feature request or request support. Features especially, we want to know what you guys want out of the app. So um, these comments, that are coming in are perfect. Um, just showing, I don't know, that helps me know we can add the temperature and the fertilizing schedule. Some of these things are so tricky because there is very dependent on where you're growing them. Like indoors, I would only fertilize maybe once a year, but outdoors, I would fertilize at least twice. Um, okay. And then Keith said, I would like to see my plant next to a plant in your library. Okay. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense, Keith. We can, yes, my, my brain is running to see how we can, how we can make that fit in. Um, Cheryl, if you have an arrangement and you took individual photos of plants and one needs watering and not the other, then how do you water that one and not the others? Okay, so that is the tricky piece with the arrangements. Um, okay, so these, okay, so these three are connected. Right, so I'm gonna actually unwater those two that are connected and I'm gonna water this one. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put this in that arrangement. It still keeps this plant as watered today. So <laughs> the this feels like a really big workaround, but I can also I can also see why it would be convenient. Um I wonder if there's a way. 
sorry, I'm trying to answer your question, but then I'm also trying to figure out how I can make it simpler at the same time. And that's not helpful at this very moment. So what I would do if there's, so these three are now connected to each other, right? And let's say that I just want to water this succulent. What I would probably do is remove it from that arrangement. You're going to get a lot of history, which is actually something that we're working on as well as being able to filter the history. I would mark it as watered and then I would go add it back to that arrangement. So like I said, it's definitely a workaround. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are some ways we could make that simpler from, um, from it, like a user interface perspective. So I'll have to see, yeah, I'll have to see how we could work that in. The arrangement is one that I know there are a handful of people that use it and they love it, but a lot of people don't like using it because it's connected. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Is to connect them together. But um, yeah, I think that'd be interesting to look at for sure. And then there's my approach where it's just like all like this, right? There are so many, um, there's so many plants in here and I do water, Actually, this is something that you could do. So I, I do spot water a few things in here, like not pictured in this over on this left-hand side. I put some ice plants in a few weeks ago and that ice plant just needed more water more frequently. Um, well, the workaround I was gonna say too that you could do would be to just add a note, but I think the note will update for all of the plants. So let's try that. So add a note. Um, I'd have to say which plant this is, huh? Okay, watered warty. Yeah, it will apply it to all of them. I think that is the, the only way at the moment is to like disconnect it from the arrangement and then reconnect it to it. I want, I want there to be a better answer than that, Cheryl, but I think that is the answer at the moment. Okay, well, if you have any questions or if you're watching this in the replay, um, feel free to leave comments, ask questions. If there's anything we didn't cover um, that you want to know, I'm an open book. And if you have suggestions, please let me know. This is a constantly evolving app. We're paying to maintain it no matter what. So I'd rather it um, use some of those maintenance costs to also build out new features to make it work even better for however you guys are using it. And like I said in the beginning, it's totally free to use for up to five plants. And then um, if you wanna add more than that, it's just $3 a month or $30 a year. And I know for me, it has saved me way more, <laughs> way more than that. Probably not the amount that I've put into development for it, but it saved me a lot more than $3 a month in lost plants. So um, super, super helpful. Oh, Carol. Is there a way to eliminate a tag? Yes. So you can, once a tag is in there, you can just click the X and then click save and then that will disappear. And then same thing with the arrangement tag. You can click the X and delete that as well. Um, you can also, I'm glad you brought this up. You can also rename things. So maybe I decided I want this to be a something fun location. Um, then I can just click save there. Um, you can do the same thing with tags. The tags by default are all lowercase because um, there's a lot of fun things with capitalization that happen in, uh, let's look at, I think I have, yeah, okay. So this tag called another, I can click here and, oh, sorry, you can, <laughs> there's two things. So if you click the pencil icon, then you can record an action for that tag. If you tap in the middle, as opposed to on that icon, then it'll let you edit or delete the tag. So I can change this and click save, and then it'll update it here as well that I changed the tag. Um, you can do the same thing with locations. I guess I did just show that, but um, okay, yeah, Carol, one second. So um, anywhere that you have like a location or you can do it with the genus as well. Instead of tapping on the edit icon, if you tap 
in the middle or on the name, it'll let you edit or delete that. Okay, Carol, let me make sure I am um, tag label in the database on my account. I have tags I created that are no longer applicable. Yeah, so you can you can delete a whole tag. So let me pull that one up really quick. Okay, so like this one, it's just a, a sample tag that I made. So I can actually just delete the whole thing. And now that I've done that, I was just thinking that probably needs a prompt there. Yeah, so now it won't show up. That tag is completely gone. Um, probably need a, are you sure that you want to delete it? Um, like same with this one. So this one, let me give it a quick name. Okay, so this one, if I come back here and I tap delete this tag, it is now deleted. And then if I go to Pinky, yeah, you can see the only tag here for it is cutting. And then it shows that I removed that tag. Let me know if that is what you were thinking. Like if that, if that answers your question. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, I think that is everything. And I hope you are able to use the app and find it as helpful as I have found it for myself.